Hello and welcome to the Segment Routed LSP Routing Preference Learning Byte. I'm Gordon Mosley with the Education Services Department at Juniper Networks. Let's get started. After completing this learning byte, you will understand how to modify routing preference values for segment routed label switched paths. Junos platforms use a routing preference value to determine an active path if it has learned more than one path to a particular destination. In this example, we have the output of a show route command. We're looking at the inet.3 table. Now this is where label switch path routing entries are stored by default on Junos platforms. In this routing table, it has a destination to the 172.20.20.2 destination, and it has, it has multiple paths. And for the purposes of this learning byte, it has a segment routed label switch path, the spring dash TE entry. And the eight that follows that is the preference value for that routing entry. It also has an RSVP signal label switch path to the same destination. And by default, RSVP signal label switch paths have a lower preference value of seven. And then Junos uses the preference value as a tiebreaker. If I have multiple ways to get to a particular destination, it will select the path with the lowest preference value and set it as the active path. And that's what the asterisk means. And so if you're going through a period of coexistence, maybe a migration, when you signal a spring segment routed label switch path, and if you also have a RSVP signal label switch path to that same destination, the purpose of this learning bot is just to get you to understand that segment routed label switch path won't be the active path. Traffic will continue to forward across the RSVP signal path, or if somebody creates a new RSVP signal label switch path, it will supersede an existing spring traffic engineered uh, label switch path. So, so we wanna be able to modify these preference values. Now, one way to do that, I can use routing policy. That gives me very, very granular control over the individual label switch paths that would be the preferred and active paths. In this learning byte, I'm going to show you a global command that can be used to set a global on this node parameter that would set the preference value to be lower than that of RSVP signaled LSPs under the edit protocols source packet routing branch of the configuration hierarchy on Junos device. There is a preference knob that can be set and I just need to set the preference value to something lower than RSVP 7. So in this example, we're going to set it to 6. We're going to commit that. And then I'm, I'm going to run a show route command and we'll be able to see, hey, look, you know, the RSVP was the active path, but now because of the adjustment, I can see this spring traffic engineered signal LSP has now has a preference of six. And so it is now the active forwarding path. So we've essentially migrated traffic from one tunnel to the other, right, by modifying this preference value. Um, I'm going to demonstrate this for you. I have a sample network I'd like you to take a look at. This is the lab network that I'm going to use to demonstrate this concept. I currently have, if you look at the diagram on the left-hand side, you'll see the VMX1 node. That's going to be the ingress node for the label switch path that terminates on the VMX2 node on the other side of this network. I already have a segment routed label switch path from VMX1 to VMX2. I want to connect to VMX1. I want to show you the routing table entry for that label switch path. I'm going to use the North Star Controller GUI interface to provision an RSVP signal label switch path between the VMX1 and VMX2 node. We'll go back to VMX1, take a look at the routing table, and you'll see, wow, okay, now that RSVP signal LSP is the active path, the segment routed path. It's up, it's active, but it's just not being used for forwarding because of preference values. We'll adjust the preference value, and we'll watch the segment routed LSP take and become the active path. Here is the VMX1 node. I want to take a look at the routing table. Specifically the inet.3 table where the routing entries for label switch paths are stored. And I want to focus on the entry for the VMX2 node who has a loopback interface that I've used to establish tunnels to and it's 172.0 20.20.2. And so here I have a spring segment routed label switch path and it's signaled and it's, it's up. It's the active path. So 
any traffic that enters the VMX1 node, if the, uh, the ultimate destination is the 172.20.20.2 node, the VMX2 node, it would be placed inside of this spring traffic engineered you know, label switch path. This was signaled by the North Star controller. So now what I want to demonstrate is I'm going to connect to the North Star controller interface and we'll provision an RSVP signaled label switch path and return back here and see how routing has changed. This is the North Star Controller Administrative Interface, and what's highlighted in the topology map is the current segment routed label switch path that we saw in the routing table entry on the VMX1 node. I'm gonna use the Add button. I'm gonna provision a new label switch path between the VMX1 and, and, and VMX2 nodes. I'm gonna give it an easy to remember name. RSVP, VMX1, the VMX2. I'm going to specify the ingress node, and this is VMX1, all right, the node on the, the left-hand side of our, of our lab diagram and in this topology map. Have it egress on VMX2. I'm going to, I'm going to keep it very simple. I'm not going to you know, do routing and scheduling and all that. I'm just going to, for the purposes of this learning byte, the main thing I need to, to do is make sure the provisioning type is RSVP and not segment routing. I already have a segment routed label switch path. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna set it to RSVP and just, just submit it. And this will cause the North Star controller to calculate the route and signal it to VMX1, or, or provision it on VMX1 so it can be signaled with, with RSVP. And, and we got lucky here, the, it's up, it's active. So it, and here's the path that was, that was calculated and, and signaled for that new RSVP label switch path. So let's go back to the VMX1 node now and see if we've, we can discover any routing changes. So here's the VMX1 node again. I'm going to run the same show route command that we ran before. And now that newly provisioned RSVP signal label switch path it, with its lower preference value, traffic has just diverted from the spring traffic engineered label switch path to the RSVP signal one. Right, so let's change this. We saw earlier that under the edit protocol source packet routing uh, branch of the configuration hierarchy, we could set a preference value, right? And we, we just need it to be lower than the seven that, that RSVP is, is currently using. So I'm gonna set it to six. I'm gonna commit the configuration, right? And, and let's take a look at our routing table now. And now, you know, the, the preference being six. And that's the purpose of this learning byte, just to get you to understand that, hey, these label switch paths do, deter based on how they're signaled, have different preference values. And that really affects which tunnels or the active paths selected by the ingress nodes to forward traffic across your WAN. In this learning byte, we modified routing preference values for segment routed label switch paths. Thank you very much. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.